Oh, Justin, how much confidence do you get out of last week's win? Oh, a lot. I mean, winning obviously promotes good feeling and you know confidence in the game planning and the teammates. So it's uh, that was good. We just got to make sure we use that in the right way and not get leaning on ourselves, but use it to encourage us to do the right things, but not get ahead of ourselves. The spirit around the club this week. I mean, it's always better after a win, but was it quite good? Oh, it's good. Yeah, well, I think we've been building really well for a month. I mean, our training's been really good. A bit of a high standard, and those little things that I guess you guys don't get to see, we, we've seen an increase in those and. Our form's getting better on the field, so uh, encouraging signs there. Is jumping off the bottom a big motivator? Uh, <laughs> of course. I mean, no one wants to be there. It's still a long way to go. I mean, there's how many games? There? Ten odd games to go. So you know, the bottom team normally wins three, five, six games. I'd like to think we can we can sort of win more than five games this year. I mean, um, you know, I, I think we've sort of hit the form that once we get to the bottom half, the ladder, we can be competitive. Um, to the point of victory, so uh, that's, a, that's a really encouraging sign. And we uh, we think this week we've got a good chance. We need to respect our opposition, uh, respect our game planning, and make sure we do all the things right. But uh, we do that. We think we can win. How much better do you think the team is now compared to what round one? Like, do you, have you seen significant improvement already? Yeah, a lot. Um, you know, just and a lot of it is confidence in each other, uh, planning what we're doing. I think that's been building with every week. Uh, with every week also, we've had a few distractions in losing players and some things like that along the way, so we've had to handle that as a team. Um, but I think that's made the players really resilient, so we're ready to, ready to attack the second half of the year. You do have a good record against the Bulldogs. Can you talk about that this week? Not really. Oh, I think history is what it is. Um, you know, a new coach, it's the first time I've played them you know, in this scenario, so um, you know, I don't think really history plays a part in it, to be perfectly honest. Our, our recent history at Idiot, Idiot has been poor too, so it depends which state you want to look at. What really matters is what we do tomorrow night. But Stephen Martin's a pretty handy inclusion, especially considering Trent West is out. Yeah, it's great. I mean, perfect timing, really. I mean, Steph's only been back two weeks from his injury, so um, thankfully he didn't happen any earlier than this, otherwise we'd really uh, be short. Um, we've got Archie Smith, our rookie. That's, uh, that's sort of the, the end of our ruck stock, so um, we're sort of getting to the end of that. Uh, so we think Steph's played really well too, the two weeks, really athletic, um, Ruckman too, so I think he'll give us something a bit extra. I mean, how important, I mean obviously your last trip to Melbourne was pretty forgettable, how important is it to sort of make amends for that yeah. tomorrow night? That was forgettable. Um, I don't think it will go worse than that, that's always a good sign that you can only go better <laughs> yeah. from that. Um, look, we'll talk about that, and we mentioned earlier, our record at Idiot hasn't been great recently, and this year it's been really poor, so we, we know we have to make amends for that and play better in Melbourne. Do you put that record down to anything particular? Why is it that you... Uh, look, a lot of things. Depends who you play. Depends how you play on the day. Um, a lot of factors. But um, nothing that's going to help us tomorrow night. And what do you mean you, you talk about their trip against us? Remember, what were you, you saying to the players from that day? Oh. <laughs> We just got beaten contested ball. I mean, one thing about our team that we know more than any of when we lose contested ball, the scoreboard goes away from us. And it just it's, that those two graphs follow each other. The scoreboard and our contested ball numbers tend to follow each other throughout the game. And ironically, we started the game really well in that area last week, and the second quarter went down minus 11, and the scoreboard went down the same. So uh, we know that's a focus for us, and there's a lot of things within that. It's not just going in harder, it's your ability to win those loose balls and, and run forward with a aggression as well. So um, but we've sort of addressed those things. Just on Steph, uh, I think he's played I think, one game since round four last year. He's had one win since 2011. Can you tell us a bit more about you know, his motivation, how he's feeling, he's up for it? Oh no, he's great. He's, he's up for it. He's ready to go. I mean, I think he watched uh, Minson's tape on Sunday night. I think he sort of knew that he was the he was sort of the next man in line, so um, he's really embraced it. I'm looking forward to getting him out there and, and, and seeing how he goes. Horrible news for Trent, obviously, with the ACL. Have you decided to think more about what he'll do? Oh yeah, he'll have his surgery next week. He's actually got a, an ankle operation he needs as well, so they actually need to do both both together. So I mean, that's just an old one. He, he was going to get scoped at the end of the year, so they're going to do both together. So they're just working out the times of that at the moment. Same leg? No. Oh. <laughs> so they're going to. I think I think they're going to do it at separate times. I don't think he wants to be in a wheelchair uh, for a few weeks. So they're going to. They're just sort of working out those uh, logistics now. You mentioned the Eddie had record quite a few times. How do you prepare for something like that? I mean, it must fill the players with a bit of a sense of trepidation when you go into a ground that you just don't really want. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can you can build it up too much to the point that it does get makes the players nervous. So you can just mention it that we need to focus better at this venue. So it's it's sort of probably putting the message through enough that it doesn't make the players nervous, but more so just makes them aware that we need to we need to play better at this ground. We need to play better not just at, at Etihad, but at all our away venues. But young teams tend to struggle more away than they do at home. So we need to make sure we focus while we're down here.
What about the opposition? They've really struggled to score this year. Six goals last week from a lot of entries. Uh, what homework have you done on them and what do you have to do to make sure that they don't break that trend against you? They kick a lot of points. That's always, you know, they kick six goals, but they kick 15 points. Yeah. So, I mean, that still had over 20 shots. So, um, you know, I guess we can look at it many ways. I mean, one thing, they're an ultimate score from stoppage team. Everyone knows that. We're going to have to match them in that area. As I mentioned, our contested ball waivers when we play poorly, so that's going to be the game, I think. Yeah. Um, if we can match the Bulldogs in contested ball, that'll go a long way for us winning the game. Um, yeah. That's going to be a big challenge for our players, um, and most contested balls done around stoppage. So um, that's it. That'll be the game. We need to improve in that area and, and, and get the job done. And just on Big Brownie, um, obviously makes a trip down. But what's the plan to him for the second half for you? Does he need to be nursed or at all? How's he? How's he? Oh, no, to ask him, he doesn't need to be nursed. Um, well, who knows? So we, 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 it's a week to week that, that sort of planning with him and his body and how he's feeling, how he pulled up from the game. Um, you know, last time from Eddie had he didn't pull up as well. So it, it, it may be next week, it may be the week after. Who knows uh, where we rest him again? But those sorts of conversations are week to week with Brownie. Could be next week, could it? Given the winnable nature of the next couple? Uh, well, if you're not fit and you're not ready to go, it doesn't matter who your opposition is and where you're playing, you're not right. I mean, that, you got to respect every opposition and, and team you're playing against. And if you're not ready to go, it doesn't matter if you're Jonathan Brown or whoever. If you're not right, you're not right. Um, so that's 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 where he's, you know, your body's got to be important in these calls. He'd be a fan of any zoning proposals, wouldn't he, to keep players in the inside picture? <laughs> <future? laughs> just about be the Jonathan Brown rule, would yeah, he? Yeah, he'd probably be that. He'd want that rule, one player stays inside 50. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon he'd have dibs on it? Yeah, I'd still be playing if that was still a rule, I think. <laughs> so, um, no, it's, it's interesting talk at the moment, isn't it? Okay.